Hey, Detroit, it's your girl Tina with Spectacle Society, and I am here with Deb Drennan of Freedom House Detroit. Deb, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. You know, Freedom House is an organization that was suggested by one of our followers, and the more I read about it, the more I was just floored by all of the services that you guys provide. So I was wondering if you can tell all of our viewers a little bit about the organization. Sure, my pleasure. So Freedom House Detroit has been in Southwest Detroit. Uh, Corktown was our, our, you know, our, our origins, and uh, but in Southwest Detroit for our, our whole history, entire history, which is close to 40 years. So Freedom House has uh, is a temporary home, but a lifetime community for asylum seekers. And these are folks who, individuals and families who are forced to flee their countries because of persecution and torture. So um, one of the, the key points about an asylum seeker is that they have to find their way out of the country uh, safely, and it's based on, uh, asylum is based on one of five uh, grounds. So people are persecuted and tortured because of their political opinion, their nationality, their religious belief or practice, uh, they could belong to a social group, um, and perhaps the LGBT community falls into that, domestic violence, um, gang uh, violence, but then also um, uh, race, based on race. So when an applicant is fleeing their country and they are applying for asylum, they have to demonstrate and prove what's called a well-founded fear that demonstrate they have been persecuted or they will have future persecution based on one of those five grounds. So they're, they're fleeing. They're, they find their way here. We have people from all over the world um, that come in and, and uh, find their way to Freedom House. So th the unique thing about Freedom House is that we are pioneers in asylum field but also we are still the only full service asylum program in the state of Michigan. And that's what we do well. Uh, so when you think of Freedom House, we have um, any, over the course of a year, we could serve up to 130 people, uh, individuals and families. And we are, everything's under one roof. So when people come into the organization uh, seeking asylum, they meet with our case manager, for what we call um, freedom lives. It means the basic needs. They, they need some shelter. They need to calm, calm themselves down a little bit. They're gonna need some medical care. They need some counseling. And so, um, but first and foremost, they we welcome them with hospitality. Here's your room, here's some food um, and, and relax, right? Then um, our, our freedom uh, lives also works with um, you know, just uh, connecting them into the, the resources. So uh, for instance, families, kids need to get into school, kids need to um, also get immunized, immunized so that they can enroll in school and just navigate that for families. And then our Freedom Aids is actually our lawyer. So they meet with the lawyer and they sit down and talk about their case. What is it about? their situation that they qualify for asylum and what i love we love about being able to be featured here is so many people in our community corktown southwest detroit don't know that they may be eligible for asylum they may have um considered themselves undocumented they may consider themselves in other you know legal quandaries but many people don't realize that they are eligible for asylum so we're really grateful to be able to say that so people who could question um, whether or not they could return to their countries they could give us a call and we could help them determine that not to guarantee it but just there are folks that that really do qualify and don't know so again, what makes Freedom House unique is that with our Freedom Aids and the legal services, then our, our case manager, the, the Freedom Aids and Freedom Lives work together. And it's a unique model that we're proud of is that case managers working with the lawyer to help them navigate. Um, every claimant has to have evidence. Every claimant has to get their medical affidavits and a psychosocial affidavits. And the case manager can help do that. So the lawyers are freed up to navigate and do country conditions and actually research all the claim and collect the information that the legal service is supposed to be doing. Then all that happens over time. 
During this time, during an application process, another key thing is that asylum seekers are not eligible for income, which makes Freedom House kind of the one-stop shop so critical. You come to the United States, you need uh, a, asylum, you know, you, you, how do you pay for a lawyer? How do you navigate housing? How do you eat? And if you, you can't work, how do you keep them safe, right? <laughs> they become vulnerable to human trafficking because if you're in a desperate situation and someone says, hey, get in my van, I'll get you some all day work. You know, they pay really well. I'll drive you back and forth. They get in the van. We never see them again. So the vulnerability of exposure. So that that's a really key thing is that to be able to be in a community where all of those things are provided for them so that their asylum case is what's really important. Then while they're going through this process, which could take up to a year, they become part of our Freedom Works. They're, they're learning how to, to ESL, English as a second language, if they're not native English speakers. They're getting uh, understanding what work culture is here in the US. They're building an American resume. All these things are happening so that when they are moving along and their asylum is granted, then they can move right into employment when it's eligible and not have to start over. Like, oh, gee, I didn't bother. I didn't learn English. I, do, I want to do this type of job training, but I never got it. At Freedom House, we provide all of that. You want to be a certified nursing assistant? We can help you enroll. You want to do a forklift or you know, truck driving? We can help you do that. And all of that is because of this brilliant community in Southwest Detroit that helps us do those services. So we are a one-stop shop navigating our clients into services that are in their own neighborhood. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you, just even with you explaining it, I was like, my God, how overwhelming it must be to go through all of those steps just to feel safe in a new country, right? To feel like you have a space and a home. Um, and I can't even imagine having to navigate all the legal aspects of it, right? All the things you have to prove by yourself. So we're trying to do it, you know, without a job, without income coming in, like those and, things are just overwhelming. Yeah. And also imagine being a woman whose torture, or man or anyone yeah. whose torture was uh, rape and, uh, or mm -hmm. sodomy, and you're having to walk through these communities where people look at you because you already are, you know, drawn in, you're looking down, you're afraid, and people then are like suspect and that adds to the trauma. And, you know, so being able to have a place to live and have someone to talk to, the, the daily nightmares that they have to, that they're exposed to, we, we really help with all these services. Oh my um, God. So that they I... can build a life and live really, and live brilliantly in love and in the community. So they can breathe a little easier. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be scary enough to have to flee, you know, your own country, right? And come to a new space in general, right? But but then to at least... You know, food, just to know what foods that you're always available to you, your comfort foods, right? Are completely you know, gone. Macaroni and cheese is so simple, right? But a lot of people like come to Freedom House and they're like, what is that? <laughs> Is that? Let me introduce you, you know, um, McShane's makes the best macaroni and cheese, right? So you want to take, let me take you out to eat, um, you know, but it is his food. It's not indigenous and it, the yeah. texture is funny, you know, so just yeah. comfort us. Our oh my God. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm just, I was so floored learning about it, but the, it was even more overwhelming just the whole hearing the whole process, right? So I'm so glad that you guys are there to provide help to these new Detroit residents and like really get them um, settled in. So let's talk a little bit about how this impacts Detroiters, right? Like how is this impacting uh, the members of our community? Well, our clients, they, they live in Southwest Detroit, they contribute. Um, and when they get their asylum or when, you know, they move out, they live, they move into the community where they have been living. So um, they're paying taxes, right? They enroll their kids in schools. They become involved in the PTO of, uh, you know, schools. Many open businesses. They, there are some um, entrepreneurs that uh, come through uh, Freedom House and in part because of one of our partners in, um, uh, that in Southwest uh, Detroit that they're able to participate in a, a, a business prep class and they uh, prosper us and they are able then to um, develop a business model and we've had a couple successes. One is uh, Galba Fair right at uh, Woodward and uh, 
Milwaukee, I think, right in Midtown. And they, a wonderful Eastern African restaurant, delicious. And they, they, they had a lot of support uh, from the, the community and they give back, they give back to Detroit, but they also um, import coffee from Burundi and the coffee they import is to also give fair wages to the people in Burundi. So that it's a double, double service, right? So this <sighs> what they're buying in, in uh, Africa, in, in Burundi, they're making sure that it's fair and just and that it's not slave trade. And then they come here and sell it, but then they also give to the community. And it, it's just okay. amazing. We have another young um, man, his, uh, he has uh, created something called Freedom Cleans and he's a cleaning company. And let me tell you how busy he's been because of these heavy rains and floods, right? Oh, God. But in Detroit, he's doing businesses, he's doing private homes, he's doing, you know, he, he and his team are very busy because, and again, wanting to give back because the community is, oh, I help them when they come in, when they get arrive, mm -hmm. right? So when you live in Southwest Detroit and you shop at the stores and you worship in churches and or, or mosques and synagogues, you get to know the community. And that's how our clients have been able to navigate. Southwest Detroit is home. And no matter where they live, I just had a man that came in and from out of state and he came in and he was uh, his green card. So a year after you, you get asylum, you get an adjustment of status, which is called a green card. And he came in and he got it in the mail, but he handed it to me and he said, I can't open this until you give it to me. Oh and it was his green card, but everything happened and started at Freedom House. And he couldn't imagine taking the next step without celebrating his home. Uh, oh a week, uh, you know, just last week I had uh, lunch with someone, a woman who moved to Connecticut. She has a young girl. And uh, we had lunch with someone who just graduated with her uh, RN and we were celebrating her great uh, news. So she's working in, uh, you know, a local hospitals, Beaumont, uh, Henry Ford. We have clients working in the, in the local hospitals and in the businesses. Uh, Wolverine uh, meatpacking, you know, they, they also pay a fair wage. They're good people. A lot of our clients work there and some have been there for uh, over five, six years still working at Wolverine because again, they're good employers and they, they, they pay fair. And, uh, um, and so, you know, it's just common, you know, you I love it. I love it. I love work in the community, right? Yeah. I really love how, you know, people who come in, not just find community at Freedom House, but then understand that like they are part of Detroit, right? Like they are part of the fabric that makes Detroit so amazing and so special and really become active members of our community. You know, I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love little success stories. And I think everyone who, you know, gets through is a success, right? Like that's I, I amazing. Agree with that. And I think one of the successes that I like to, to also share is, um, a woman who uh, came to Freedom House for her asylum and in the process lost a father, a brother, and two children who were murdered because of the violence. Oh my God. Time. She gets to Freedom House, she gets her asylum, and Freedom House, so when you apply for asylum, if you have family members back home, then you add, if you list them on your claim that, you know, and then you can petition them to come. So she did bring her daughter and her remaining son and they now live together, work hard, you know, money is not easy, but her daughter, she married and, and they're now, she's now the client is a grandmother, right? So when she came thinking she, this is it, you know, what I'll never see my family again. And, and now she's a grandmother and, you know, happy as can be. And still, you know, that's, that's the commitment to yeah. um, the community we serve is that, you, they come and they're just so despondent. Like, how can I, how can I move on? My life is in little by little, you know, yeah. dignity returns, humanity, they, they can face themselves to face the world and then, yeah. you know, their grandparents. So uh, <sighs> wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, they, they bring them to Freedom House so we can meet those babies, which yes. is pretty I cool. love that. I love that. Oh, I just, I, I also just love how, it's full circle, right? Like she lost so many family members of so much loss and then able to reconnect with the family members she did have less and now her family's growing again. Like that's amazing and it may not have happened in her country of origin, right? Like that's well, amazing. She and now she's a happy member of Detroit with a family, right? 
I'll stop there. That's right. It's amazing. Um, so, you know, this um, last year or so has definitely been challenging for everybody with all sorts of things that are going on, but how has the pandemic affected Freedom House? Well, Freedom House is one of the lucky ones that did not have to close our doors because of the pandemic. The community, this community we live in rallied around us and made sure we had PPE, made sure we had uh, enough toilet tissue, you know, try buying toilet tissue for a shelter. Um, and, you know, all the cleaning supplies we needed, the community really did rally around us. And so, and, and also our staff, I mean, I, I have to say, uh, I've been at Freedom House for 15 years and the staff is just amazing. Everyone stepped up to the plate so that we could have full coverage. Didn't matter that the lawyer worked on Saturdays so we could cover the house. It didn't matter that, you know, the development director also came in and worked an extra couple hours of the evening so we could cover the house. Everybody pitched in. And so we were able to keep the house safe and clean. And in part, the city of Detroit, you know, they, they really made sure that we had the resources. The health department came in and did testing. They did screening. So we were able to stay open. Um, and because of that, we were also able to help people who otherwise, maybe not asylum seekers, but a few people who did run into some trouble with mm -hmm. housing, were able to welcome them in during that time as well. Lovely. It was tough. It was hard. Um, the, the pandemic, you know, when you come from countries, I, I think some people right now are facing this concern, but when you come from countries where poison is a form of torture, Mm -hmm. suggesting that you get a shot, suggesting that we put this, you know, tool in your mouth or, you know, up your nose. There right. was a lot of concern about what's that going to be like. And we have a program called Freedom Cares mm -hmm. and working with the uh, global health uh, unit over at uh, Wayne State, we had medical teams, uh, Dr. E.G. Oma uh, and Dr. Jamie Snell, they came in and we do these court classes and what really is the pandemic? How, what are these, how is testing dangerous? Um, and then as we got closer to a vaccine, what is the vaccine? Uh, myth, uh, you know, fact from myth, uh, fear, you know, answering questions that were really fear-based um, and giving information. And when people, our clients and residents had, and staff, when we had the information, then we were able to get everyone vaccinated. So. Um, the, the health department, as well as uh, this uh, program, Freedom Cares, made a real difference. So now when people come in from anywhere around the world, and if, you know, we screen just like everyone else did, you, you, you screen with the questions, the temperature and those kinds of things. But also then, you know, there's a time of quarantine where you come in and we're going to just have you wait until you can join the general community to yeah. rule out. Um, you know, and, and so we, we had, a, I'd say a significant number of cases in the early, early stages of the pandemic. And now uh, the health department comes regularly and, and, you know, because we have all the practice in place, you know, we didn't stop, you don't stop taking precautions because, you know, uh, there are no positives. So we still keep up with the ritual cleaning and we still use, uh, you know, masks and, and so we haven't had a positive. Oh, um, but it did impact, you know, the clients. It's like one more thing. And remember when the pandemic hit, then all of the offices closed, the embassies closed, the asylum yes. offices closed, the courts closed, which meant everybody's case was delayed. Right. And right. that created, that was the part that created uh, most of the anxiety and tension around when will my case be heard? Because yes. like I mentioned about these other clients, their families are still back home in harm's way also now at a pandemic, right? right? May not have access to vaccines. So while their families are in harm's way and there are delays in the country for them to have their asylum application, what? It, it was a really, really trying time. So now we're seeing it open. People are having their interviews. People are being granted decisions. We had a decision just last week granted for a woman. She arrived in the country five years on the date she was granted asylum. So she waited five years from the wow. date, but it wow. was finally granted. That's and intense. Of came to Freedom House, right? Yes. Came to Freedom House, right? Yes. So, um, so we're starting to see some movement and we're really grateful about that. 
Well, that's fantastic. I mean, when I asked that question, I had a feeling we were going to talk about how it delayed people's, you know, paperwork and how it delayed the offices and what have you. But I didn't even think about, you know, the the pandemic was there was so much fear based um, media around the pandemic, right? And it, just as a native English speaker, right, as somebody born in the U.S. It was a scary time, especially at the beginning, right? And and even with the vaccines, like people are are divided about what's safe and what's not, right? I didn't even think about how frightening that could be to somebody coming in who doesn't really understand the culture as much, who doesn't really understand the language as well. So that you guys were able to kind of step up, get doctors in, give them a sense of security and peace of mind, tell them exactly what's going on. And you know, that's that's amazing because I think lots of us were freaking out anyway, right? Like, and so right. it had to be even more intense for, you know, the people who have come to call Freedom House home during the last few years. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, we are having the community vote on where our community investment fund goes. And I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about how, if, if the community selects Freedom House Detroit, how will the funds be used? Well, they will be used to continue the to develop these success stories, right? So, you know, client services are, as we mentioned, right? They cannot work. They cannot buy, you know, have access to medical care. They, if they need a prescription or, um, you know, winter coat for heaven's sake, simple things, right? So, our the funds will be used to continue to operate. Uh, the services in a way that our clients uh, get what they need when they need it, as well as helping our um, social services department where the legal department and the case managers and the employment training programs are fall under that umbrella, will continue to provide the supports needed for continued success stories. Even when that means, you know, if, um, you know uh, a family member coming back and, and applying for, uh, you know, uh, let me rephrase that. Even when it means a client coming back who has their asylum, been granted asylum, and we want to file to get their families back, right? All of these services and all of the funds that will be donated would go to literally, literally saving lives and keeping families together. Oh my God. I love that. I love it. Um, so I am just, I'm floored by all of the services that you guys provide. It's, it's amazing. And the idea that you were the only like full service asylum um, refuge in the, in Michigan at all. I mean, that's incredible. And I'm so proud that, that Detroit gets to call you at home, right? Like that's amazing. And um, we are an incredible city made up of a tremendous amount of different people. And I just, I love that. Um, so I hope that everybody is watching is as inspired as I am about Freedom House Detroit. And I am wondering if you could tell us how people can help. How can they get involved? Are there ways that they can donate or volunteer or donate time? Or, you know, what are the ways that people can help out Freedom House Detroit and its residents? Thank you. I love this question. So our volunteer needs change regularly. So um, volunteer postings are on our website, freedomhousedetroit.org. So um, people who would want to help could do that. Um, we have our, our Freedom Voices of Freedom Festival, October 15th. So if you visit our website, it's a wonderful opportunity to either sponsor or buy a ticket. It, we're hosting it you know, right in our Southwest Detroit neighborhood. Um, and then there are other opportunities to give. So knowing that th there's so much happening and people, you know, financially, people have been laid off and so many things. So Freedom has, has opportunities for people with limited resources to still make donations for as little as $5 a month, right out of your bank account, you can become what's called a Beacon Network member. So a Beacon member is someone who donates a, a minimum. These are good for college students and uh, even some high school students, but college students and, and uh, people on fixed income where you know, we all take more, of course, but is yeah, uh, limited sure. at $5 a month and just donate on a regular basis at, under the Beacon Network. Then for those who have a little bit more resources and want to give back, who are concerned about all of this, you know, the uprest around the world right now and want to do something, but go, what can I do? Well, you can help people right in your own neighborhood 
and you can sponsor a seeker. So again, visit our website and there's a, a place where you can sponsor a seeker from different regions of the world, right? So somebody might want to, uh, thinking about what's happening in Afghanistan right now and say, you know what, I really wanna help a newcomer coming to the country. So they can go right to the website and click on that. Or someone says, you know what, uh, Central America, Mexico, that's where I wanna help, you know, oh, Africa. So you can sort of pick the region where your donations um, are going to, uh, you know, going towards. Um, and then for um, $35 minimum a, a month, you can sponsor a seeker. Again, for those who can afford more, they do. So I think the average, while well, we ask for 35, um, usually comes out to about $50, but that's not what people can afford. You know, we, we don't want people to, you know, go broke because, um, but you know, $35 a month. And so that's a brilliant way. And then another important way is for people who would Freedom House Detroit on social media, all of them, right? So we have Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, to find us, follow us and be ambassadors, spread the word. So if you see a post from Freedom House and it speaks to you, you know, like, wow, you know, another asylum, forward it and say, can you imagine this neighborhood in, you know, my neighborhood, this is what's happening. Speak well, also help other people um, understand who asylum seekers are and kind of let's be myth busters, right? And uh, challenge some of the misunderstandings so that people um, in, in being ambassadors can help us and say, I challenge you. Do you belong to a faith-based group? Are you a sorority, a fraternity? Do you belong to, you know, a, um, a, you know, local, local group, holidays, birthdays, in lieu of, could you make a donation? Say to everybody, you know what, let's just make a donation. There's so many ways to be ambassadors to help asylum seekers from around the world who are living right here in Detroit, Michigan. Oh and we gosh. encourage people to do that. I have to tell you, I love your answer because I was, I was thinking about, God, you know, when I was a student and working three jobs and putting myself through school, like I didn't, I, I, you know, I always wanted to help in whatever ways that I could, right? Donate clothing, donate time, what have you, but did I have funds? No, but $5 is one cup of coffee a month, right? Yes, I'm a Diet Coke drinker. <laughs> You know what? I, I, it's a couple diet cokes. I can right, exactly. I mean, if you, you think yeah. about those things, right? Like it, it's one beverage or a few beverages or something small every month that you can donate. And even if you can't, one of the things that I love that you said is just let's be an ambassador and let's amplify, right? It costs absolutely nothing to share a post, to, you know, give a shout out to an organization, to say, hey, look at what this um, you know, community is doing. And while I, you know, may not be able to give financially, like I would love the people in my life can to, you know, please let's, let's raise a little money for this organization. I think that's incredible. Um, I love that there are multiple ways that people can get involved. Um, and I love that you consider that, right? Because there are lots of people who I think, you know, want to do good and want to help, but maybe don't necessarily know ways in which they can or feel like the ways that they can contribute might not make a big difference and you know everybody contributing the small amount that they can can make huge differences that's right that's right, right? so we're really able to help each other to you know come together and help our own community and that's, right. that's amazing um deb i have just loved learning more about freedom house and thank you so much for taking the time uh, to tell all these Detroiters exactly what we do. Um, and the website is freedomhousedetroit.org, correct? And that's where they can find you guys. Um, and then everybody keep following our profile. We will give you little bits of information throughout the month about what Freedom House does. And then in October, you guys will vote for where our community investment fund goes and definitely have some more information about Freedom House and that way you can make an informed decision. All right, Detroit, till yeah. next time. Yeah, Tina, if someone has any questions, like I didn't cover something that someone might have, you know, a, a question popped up, they yeah. can reach out to me at Freedom House and I'm happy to, you know, answer questions that That's might so have been or they have a, more thinking around the line of something. So um, always feel free to contact me at Freedom House. Wonderful. Okay, Detroit. Well, then you can reach out to Deb at Freedom House. She is happy to talk to you. And then we will see you guys next time.